This video isn't meant to offend anyone. Sources will be added in the caption. Please reserve judgment until watching. One movie that truly left an impact on me is 300. The stunning visuals and unforgettable dialogues and quotes have stayed with me to this day. In fact, I still find myself repeating some of them among my friends and family members. However, upon watching it for the first time, I couldn't help but notice that many Persians were portrayed as black individuals. The famous messenger was literally a black African actor of Ghanaian descent. My first thought was that since Persia was an empire that encompassed some parts of Africa, this might have been the reason. And we also know that Persians got captives from Africa while they invaded Kemet and they used Nubian archers in their army. Several years prior to that, while visiting a museum, I discovered this beautiful Persian artwork depicting Persian archers. And what shocked me was the fact that they were depicted with an extremely dark skin, like Africans. That day I realized that ancient Persians were dark-skinned individuals. But except the movie 300 that added a few black people in the cast, all other movies depicted them similar to Scandinavians. Later on, while studying ancient Eurasians, I discovered that things were a bit more complex than I thought. Last year, I made a video about Natufians. The video was based on a study about the first farmers of the Middle East. It proved that contrary to what most people thought and to their location, Natufians were of African descent. Contrary to their neighbors, they did not belong to the out-of-Africa migration and didn't have any Neanderthal admixture. The out-of-Africa migration is a theory claiming that a second migration out of Africa happened about 100,000 years ago in which anatomically modern humans of African origin conquered the world by completely replacing archaic human populations. Based on that theory, all humans living out of Africa today descend from these humans who left Africa 100,000 years ago. And this led to classifying all early civilizations located out of Africa and even in North Africa as the accomplishment of these early humans. But this new genetic study about Natufians reshuffled the cards because it proved that after the out of Africa event, there was another migration, but now from people similar to sub-Saharan Africans. And Natufians belonged to that group, meaning that genetically and even phenotypically they were similar to sub-Saharan Africans making the invention of agriculture the accomplishment of Africans. But the surprises didn't stop there. The same study also linked some ancient populations in Iran to that group of sub-Saharan people. And this was unexpected to me. So, basically, at that point I had ancient Persians depicting themselves with very dark skin, and now a genetic study was linking these populations to Africa. But in terms of phenotype, I didn't have any anthropological data to back it up, since haplogroups don't completely define phenotypes. Someone can belong to a European haplogroup, for example, and still look like an indigenous African. Then, a few weeks later, while working on a video about the original populations of Eurasia, I discovered an anthropological study of the populations of the world. And among these populations, there were ancient Persians or Iranians. The scholar noticed something very strange while analyzing their remains. Phenotypically, they didn't cluster with their immediate neighbors. Instead, they clustered with populations today living far away from them. And guess who it was? Sub-Saharan Africans and Australian Aboriginals. Populations known to have what some call Negroid features. It was unbelievable. But the surprises didn't stop there because these weren't just some random Iranians. These were Achaemenian Persians. Achaemenian is an adjective that means related to the dynasty ruling in Persia from Cyrus I to Darius III, 553 to 330 BC. In other words, the study was proving that the Persian Empire was founded and ruled by individuals who were linked to Africa. But you may now wonder if this is true, then why do Iranians don't look like that today? Well, the study also answered that question. The scientists noticed that the features of Iranians were similar to Africans from ancient times to the Islamic invasion of the area. In other words, the Arab invasion of the area is what triggered the change in phenotype and led the population to look different today. So, to conclude, we see that. In their art Persians depicted themselves carrying tropical features like dark skin. 
Then genetic analysis of the early populations in the area showed that they were distinct from their neighbors and similar to Africans. And finally, anthropological analysis confirmed that these populations still carried tropical features until the Arab invasion of the region. This doesn't necessarily mean that modern Iranians aren't linked to ancient Persians. It means that the modern population is mixed. I don't know about you, but to me the answer is clear. Ancient Persians were black. This isn't an attempt to blackwash history. I found all this by accident. But what do you think about it? Is the data enough to make that claim? Let me know in the comment section. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you like this content. Thanks for watching Mr. Emodup's channel and see you in the next video.